to. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so tip number four, um, what I'd say, was it five? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I literally was like, I was so bad because I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. I've come to, I've fired the dentistry, I've gone in. Literally. And I was like, You're went home. Like that. I went home and rang my mum and was like, oh, I'm so awful. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we've got a really special video for you guys. We're going to be talking about what we would have told our younger selves at dental school. I'm joined by the lovely Dr. Estelle Williams. Hi guys. Um, so we went to dental school with each other. We just recently graduated like about two, three, two, three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it was like ages ago. Literally, like yeah. it's crazy that we're both doctors now because I remember we literally met like first year? First, first week, first year. First like, year. Together the whole five years. Literally. So we've been through the ups, the downs, stressful times, <sighs> things yeah. we learned. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's a lot to say, but we've managed to get it down to six main things that we want to tell you guys before you start dental school. Things that we've learned ourselves that we found to be really important. And yeah, we really hope you guys find it useful. If you do find it useful, remember to click the like button and subscribe. Um, but yeah, we'll get straight into it. Um, so get your notebook out and we'll be giving you our top tips. Okay, so the first tip that I'd give you guys, something that I would have told my younger self before starting dental school, is to make sure that I'd organized my notes. Before, like, cause I remember, so I'd go into the lectures with the intention. You know how we yeah. all go in, we have our notepad, <laughs> Like you write everything down and then you go home and you have the intention to write it up, um, to put it into your folder, but it just somehow doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but I still was really organized. So <laughs> she's like, yeah, I was oh, like, like, I don't know about you, but, but yeah, yeah, that's one thing I'd say to you guys, write up your notes as soon as you can. Maybe have one dedicated day to just getting all your notes in order, putting it into a folder. If you're someone who's more digital, maybe you can make like a, Word document. I started making a Word document around third year and I think if I had done that in first year life would have been a lot easier because I remember when I was in third year I had to just do like a whole revamp of my notes and that took me ages. So I definitely say to you guys start as early as possible. Um, and like, yeah. I used to write my notes up immediately after the lecture yeah. and I used to do yeah, yeah, she was she was yeah. it. So <laughs> I was that girl who used to come in with like loads of yeah. notes and just spend hours doing notes after the lecture but it's so much easier when it's fresh in your head and you're you just come so. from a lecture go right down straight away otherwise you leave it till the exam to come rise and you have no idea what exactly what's going on, really. just because you've written it on that day it's going to seem fresh but then you're gonna look at it like a couple of days later and be like, what, <laughs> what yeah, is this? So just keep going over it. So yeah, having yeah. a document all together or written notes or electronic, just such a good way of like keeping all the knowledge in your head. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, that's my first one for you guys. Um, so? So my first top tip that I would have like, liked to have known before I came to dental school was firstly, things that you find difficult start early on. So for me, it was learning medications. Mm. That was really, I found that really hard, like yeah. what they interacted with, what was their pharmacology, everything like that I found so difficult. Yeah. Even to the point where I was in fifth year, I was still a bit unsure. Yeah. So what I would have done, what I would have told my younger self, is to start, as soon as you see your first patient on clinic, write down the medications they're on, ask mm -hmm. them what they're taking them for, yeah. and then look them up in the BNF or something like that, and just like write it down and have a big document as you're going along seeing patients, because I think learning in like a clinical way helped me a lot better, rather yeah. than just learning them by rote and stuff. If you can actually relate them to the clinic environment and keep a document with your clinic, then it yeah. so makes so much more sense. Like it can them. be very overwhelming when you have a list yeah. of like medication <laughs> chapter. I'm like, what? What is my first direction? Yeah, yeah. Sort of like, you have to remember the doses, yeah. how many times a day they have to take it. Um, but I think exactly what Estelle said, if you have a patient and you, I know we get really scared when we see a long medication issue, you're like, what is that? Like, <laughs> don't feel overwhelmed, break yeah. them all down, write them out individually, and then you can just keep that going throughout your time at dental school. Yeah, and use that as an yeah. opportunity to learn those mm. medications, because you're more likely to remember it if you've had a patient that yeah. is on them. So, exactly. Yeah, so, so learn sure. your medication. Learn your medication. Really important. Okay, so my third tip, something that I would have told myself before starting dental school, is to not beat yourself up. 
you will have bad days, sometimes things won't go well. Um, for me personally, I think it was with like exams because if you're applying to dentistry, everybody that's got in, you've all got A's, you've all done really well to get into dental school. Um, and you're probably used to coming from an environment like sixth form where you've done really well, you're probably the top of your class, you've got the best grades, and then when you get to dental school, you're just literally like, uh, everyone's like this. I think it's that <laughs> realisation of, like, it's great that everyone's doing well and stuff, but it's you're sort of, you're all sort of the same, there's yeah. not much putting you apart, so sometimes that can be quite difficult. Yeah, it can come as a bit of a shock, yeah. actually, like, I remember one of my exams that I'd done, I didn't do as well as I hoped to, and I was just like, what? Like, you, you feel really distraught, like, what is going on? Because you're not used to that, but I think that's not, and it's normal to feel like that as well. Like, and everybody has like a bad day, a bad exam at yeah. time. Like, you know, I rang you one day, like, crying about things. Like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm literally so, crying to a spell. Like, like, I was like, I'm not yeah. passing dental school. Like, there's like, no way. I was so upset. But that's just one day and yeah. one exam. So you'd be able to pick yourself up and yeah. like do better in other things. As and well. I think the most important thing is learning from it, learning from failure. Don't be afraid of failure because I think when I was like, I was, I'll be honest with you guys, I was close to failing the exam and I literally had to reflect and be like, okay, what? could I have done better? Why did this happen, you know? So I think it's really important to learn from it and, and not beat yourself up. Because I think when you start going into a negative spiral, I think there were times where I was like, oh, really just insulting myself, like, oh, why are you like this? And oh, you're not, you're gonna fail. And just really just saying negative I think once things. you're in that negative mindset, so it's not doing you any good mm. to do better. Like it's maybe just shelving it and being yeah. like, yeah, I've done bad, but I'm not gonna do bad next time. What can I do? Reflect on it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be really disheartening as well. You can have people around you like saying, oh yeah, I got this, I got this percentage, I came this, and you're just there like, I think it's a cool story. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't listen to them, don't listen to them. Yeah, like, um, that, like, that comes on quite nicely to my, like, the fourth tip that I would have known is, would like to have known, is that your classmates aren't your competition. 100%. But a lot of people yeah. get confused with that, and they just start being like, oh, so-and-so's got this, and blah, blah, that, and like, I'm rubbish, or yeah. like, or even the opposite of being like, oh, I bet they're like too, too overconfident, but your classmates aren't your competition. Yeah, 100%. Everybody has strengths and weaknesses and is working at their own pace to reach their own goals. So like, like I, I remember I really struggled with crown preps. So I couldn't, <laughs> I remember when we first started doing them, I was like, I couldn't do them. Yeah. And like, I was really struggling. I was like, oh, everyone's so good at this. Like, I can't do it. And then actually when I thought about it, like, I was good at something that they weren't good at. So it's always just recognizing yeah. your strengths yeah. and weaknesses and everyone's got them. So don't, with the people around you, support each other instead. 100% because oh, dental school, it can be a very competitive environment and you feel like everyone's like doing their own thing and some person might be better at you doing something, but honestly, don't see it as competition. If you've got something that can genuinely help someone else, share it with them. Like I wasn't, I tried not to be stingy with stuff. If someone asked me for something, I'd be like, you know what, if this is gonna benefit them, why not? Because then. Obviously don't do stuff to expect something in return, but I believe in karma, like good things will come to you if you just do good to others. So don't try and hold things to yourself. Exactly. Sharing, share yeah. resources, share your knowledge, yeah, share your skills. Sharing is caring, guys. Like, we're not all like, when we say like competition as well, like healthy competition is great. Like, yeah. you know, just looking at other people, how you can improve yourself, mm -hmm. but don't compete to the way it, like to the point where it takes over your life and that you're just getting yourself done. Down or getting yeah. others down through competing, like compete in a healthy way, and just yeah, yeah. Don't so, be that person that's just very to themselves, and you're like, no, sorry, I'm not everyone's help got you. one journey, you know. Goal, so exactly. go there together rather than you know competing. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so tip number five: your practical skills will come. Okay, you're gonna be bad at your first spinning, and don't take it to heart. Um, not everyone, I know everyone's putting their personal statement manual dexterity and you're probably really hands on if you want to do dentistry, you have to be. But I remember like when I picked up the drill and I had to do like that first thing to pick up the drill. We had to, to, to like, draw our names in a in like a block. Yeah, a block of, I don't know, well, I don't know what material it was. Yeah, they, but... they got us, basically they got us to practice like get, using the drill. And that was like the hardest thing ever, like trying to orientate Gosh. yourself. The first time we had to write our name in it and I literally was like, I was so bad, like I was like, oh, can't do this. I've come to I fly for dentistry, I've got in and I was like, you're went home. Gets like that. I went home and rang my mom and was like, oh, I'm so awful. Like, <laughs> Imagine. But, and that was the first time 
I picked up the drill, so realistically, yeah. I wasn't being realistic. So, <laughs> but honestly, don't beat yourself up about that. When you get to the later years of dental school and you might have to do different treatments, you might feel like your practical skills aren't there and you feel really nervous at first, especially when you have to do it on a patient. Um, but honestly, I'm going to tell you this from experience, it honestly does come. And I know it's really hard to believe now, um, especially from that first experience doing fillings. But now I'm doing fillings and I don't think about it too much. It's like second nature. It's like practice. Like, I know it's so cliche, but practice does make perfect. Yeah. The first time you do something, you're unlikely to just do it perfectly. I don't know anyone who just does things perfectly first time. No. But now, if that's you, then yeah, good, good, good on you. you. <laughs> but, you know, the but, like, yeah. but now, like a lot of stuff that we found hard in the beginning, we probably wouldn't have to think about twice, and we'd be confident doing it. Yeah. So it does come like you says, like yeah. your practical skills will do. It's like come. the analogy we were just about driving a car. Yeah. Um, when you first get into a car, you're like, well, what is this? What's going on? but soon it becomes second nature. So don't worry about if you feel your clinical skills are behind or if you don't feel that confident at first, it will come. No one was born with a drill in their hands, yeah. guys. Like, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no one knew how to do dentistry at the start. It's something that we're all learning together. Yeah, so I'll definitely say, don't worry if your practical skills aren't there in the beginning, because by the time you get to the end, they will come. and you literally look back and think, oh my gosh, I used to be worried about doing why, that. Why am I worried? Like, yeah. it'll be fine. So it will happen. Yeah. So the final tip, which is don't ask, don't get. Yeah. And that's like, if you've got a question or something that you don't really understand, ask it. Ask your tutors, ask for their knowledge, ask for their help. Don't be too shy or too embarrassed that you don't understand something. Like, they're not, their tutors, that's they're their job. They're to help. Yeah. yeah, if you like, and it's better you ask it now than be thinking years down the line, like, oh, I never really understood that. Mm. I didn't, I should have asked. Mm. Like, for me, like, I was always embarrassed about asking questions. Yeah. I know, like, it's quite daunting. It is. Especially in a lecture when, yeah, when you're in a lecture with, like, so many smart yeah. people, you're just like, oh, gosh, is this question stupid? But uh, the majority of the time, it's a good question. Yeah. I remember at the beginning as well, I felt nervous, like, putting my hands up. But by the time I got more comfortable, I'll put my hand up and ask a question. Because if you don't ask in that moment, you're never going to find out. Exactly. And it's best going to be explained to you then and there. And chances are, it's not just you who's going to want to know the answer to that yeah. question. A lot of people probably have that question in their yeah. heads, but no one decided okay. to ask. So definitely, mm. if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. That goes for the same in clinic as well. In clinic, so my biggest, like my biggest advice to anyone is always ask your tutors about different techniques, different ways of doing treatments. They have so much experience, and so they're there to, like as a tutor for a reason. Like they want to tell you, they want to like they want to help you. Yeah. yeah. So just ask, and that's the same as if like you want to go and see something. Say one of your tutors is a specialist in something. Mm. Um, go and and you, you're really interested in it. Ask, yeah. ask. Say, can I come and watch? Like, yeah. it's, I, it's I, I, I'd say never miss an opportunity yeah. to learn. You know, hundred um, percent. If you see something and you want to find out more, the worst that could happen is that they're going to say no. That that's yeah. obviously it. Like, that's the worst answer you're going to get. And actually, yeah. it probably looks like you're if you're seem interested about something, that's going to come off good on you. So, yeah, so. so always ask, never miss an opportunity. Never always miss an opportunity, <laughs> always ask. So yeah, that brings us to the end of the video, guys. I really, really hope you guys were able to take something away from that. Um, we managed to survive five years yeah, of dental school. Yeah, we made it out. So. Um, <laughs> and if we had known these things at the start, things would have probably been a lot smoother or we just felt a lot more, more confident and comfortable, yeah. yeah. So I wish someone had given me to give me some tips like yeah. when I first started. Because then you just you sort of start and you're just like, oh, you're really anxious, really nervous. Mm -hmm. But I think it's always reassuring to know that other people have been in that position as well. Okay, so I think you guys should really just take these things on board and yeah, I really hope you guys do well. Yeah. Um, let us know how you get on. If you found this video useful, just leave a comment below. Um, and you can find us on Instagram as well. So where can they find you? Dr. They can find Estelle. me on Instagram at Estelle the Dentist. I'll put it up on screen <laughs> so you can find her. And you can find me at Dr. Wednesday Dental. Um, so just drop us a message. Yeah, any help. any advice, we go, yeah. ask us. Don't yeah. ask, don't get. So don't ask, don't, don't get. get. See? <laughs> We're more than happy to help. Like, we've been in your position, so yeah. we know what it's like to want to ask or we need some guidance on things. 100%. Um, so yeah, um, remember to like and subscribe and yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.